Oh, I am Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101 Review. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest. He's the author of several books, no other than Mr. Martin Litter. Hello again. Oh, welcome back, Mr. Martin, to Book 101. And thank you for all the times that you shared to us to talk <laughs> about all your books. Seven seven in total so far, yeah. Yes, and I'm so very grateful that you are being part of my podcast. You're welcome. Pleasure's all mine. So, Mr. Martin, what book we were going to talk about today? We're going to talk about my debut novel, um, which is called uh, Always Judge a Book by Its Cover. Oh, this is your debut novel? Yeah. First one released in 2020, I think, was it? Or 2019? 2020. Wow. You still remember every detail of it. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, you know, it's my first baby, so... (laughs) So, History is a Lie is your favourite, and which second book that you publish? Uh, Demons Are Forever was second, then uh, then History is a Lie. Oh, that's interesting. So, always judge a book by its cover. Who inspired you to write Um, this book? Yeah, this is a... (laughs) It was just a story that um, years ago, I was with this, uh, this girl... And, uh, and she sort of she sort of inspired me with it, you know how, how you, um, <laughs> it's it's a it's a crazy story this one it's a bit of gender bending um, what what it is is the hero well uh, a young girl inherits her grandma's house and uh, she's a bit lonely and that and this fella comes round to um, help her sort out the garden and they sort of end up moving in together. And as they're renovating the house, they find out that her grandma was a witch, you know, a white, a white witch. And uh, she's she's part of a cult that years ago could could body swap, um, you know, so you could you could get into the body of someone else. And and back in the medieval times, they were quite important because they could jump into bodies of kings or princes or generals and they could make a decision, uh, you know, to alter wars or marriages or whatever. Um, but as time went on, magic sort of died out. So they put this magic into a ring, which she then finds, and she, she, they start uh, having some adventures with it. It doesn't work out well. <laughs> wow. So being your debut novel, did meet your expectation? Um, it's, it's probably a bit rough around the edges, you know. It's, um, I rewrote some bits of it. Uh, and I, I learned a lot from releasing this one. You know, I, I thought, well, you release a book and someone will just pick it up at random, but that doesn't really happen. So, um, you know, and I, and I tried to, I tried to sort of write it. Yeah, you know, the, the the main character, one of the main characters, is a bloke called Keith, and I, I like giving characters names that I've always met through my life, like Keith and Nigel. Uh, but you don't really get them in books. You know, I I, I work with I work with three people called Keith. And so I like to have a hero with a name that that sort of you know isn't isn't uh, is a normal name, but you don't see anywhere in books or films. I've never seen a Nigel in a film, you know, or an Ian, you know, things like that. So um, yeah, so but he's a um, you know he's a, he's a bit of an idiot really, and I wanted to sort of show that. So he's always cracking jokes, and some of them are a bit risque and uh, off colour. But I wanted that to show his personality, you know, because people are like that. Um, so, yeah, so I, le- I learned that, you know, some people don't sort of warm to that. Although, they, although we all know these people exist, people are like, oh, that's a bit out, out of order. But but I, I used the humour to show that he was an idiot. Yes, sounds interesting. So how many times you revised this book? Uh, just, just the once, um, after some feedback. You know, so I, I I just sort of calmed it down a little bit. You know, um, some of, some of his jokes were a bit off colour, I guess, but, but it's still it's still a good story. Yes. So how many days? Well, 
this is the first one I wrote when I went traveling. Um, I was living in Borneo at the time, and I thought, right, I'm going to you know, write this book. And I wrote it in about a week, and it was about 17 pages. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All oh, oh, right. That's, uh, that's not how I thought it would work out. You know, you got these ideas, and you sort of bang them out. And it was really, really short, you know, so I had to sort of think, well, well, I need to start putting detail. So I, so I joined a couple of things and sort of like learned how to, how to write, although my, although my writing is still quite short. I don't get into detail, you know, and my niece was doing literature at school and she was saying, oh, you need to describe everything with, you know, the, the smell and the taste and that. And, uh, and after re- re- rewriting it, I just put loads of weather in there. And I thought, look, this is boring. You know, I could need to get the story. So, so the initial one I wrote in about a week. Uh, and then I, then I just kept picking away at it very slowly for probably about three months until I got to like 126 pages, I think, like my normal standard size book. So being your debut novel, did yeah. you learn a lot from this book? Yeah, well, yeah, probably after after release, I learned a bit more, and uh, like I said, it's you know, it, it was it was well received, you know, but it, obviously being my debut, I think I got a lot of support from friends and family, probably the, the most I've got from any of my books, you know, they got bored after the first one, um, you know, so now now I've like my last one that I released, I think I've got like my sisters read it, that's it, all the other reviews are like people that. You know, follow me on Twitter and things like that. Um, where my first one, I think I've got like 23 reviews, and I'm, I'm just going to look through it. And probably, probably um, 10 of them are from friends and family. You know, so it's not a true reflection of, of the book, you know, because obviously they <laughs> no friends and family you wouldn't star. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, uh, but, you know, it's, it's, it's in my usual style. You know, it's, it's got some crazy goings on. Um, it's got some normal people that are thrust into a a strange situation this time a bit of magic involved and um and it's got some lessons i mean like the you know the the title itself you know she thinks that he's a bit of an idiot she then falls in love with him and thinks no he's she's got it wrong but then in the end he proves he is an idiot so that's why i say always judge your book by its cover and i say that because yeah we all do we we look at yeah you know, if you're looking for a fantasy novel they're pretty standard yeah, with a sword bearing either warrior maiden on the front or a cone on the back, barbarian type guy, you know, and, and they're all the same sort of style of writing, you know. So we all judge books by the cover. We judge it by, you know, if it's got Stephen King written on the front for a start. So all this uh, don't judge a book by its cover is, is probably nonsense. And first impressions are, you know, normally spot on, aren't they? So, so that's, that's a lesson. And the other lesson is, as I said, that they use um, this magic that they get by swapping bodies. He's, he's a big bloke. He's six foot four. Um, she's a petite, you know, a gorgeous woman like they all are in books. And um, he, he gets addicted to having the sex as her, <laughs> you know, in her body. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and she sort of uses his body for... I don't know, painting and decorating, you know, because she, <laughs> she doesn't have to get a ladder out and things like that, you know, and, um, you know, where her, her ancestors used it for political gains and things like that, you know, so it's sort of a, a reflection on modern life. I mean, there's one bit that she says in it, she says, like, yeah, my ancestors changed the world with his power. All I've done is have sexual kicks out of him and the decorating, you know, and it's sort of like, you know, a reflection of sort of modern life and, and where we are, you know, so, and, um, you know, and, and there's a bit in there about love. Um, you know, he, he says that he loves her and the power of love. And uh, she goes into this saying about the power of fancy. You know, people love their wife and kids, but they fancy their secretary. So they're willing to sacrifice all their you know, yeah, good things, their job, their wife, their kids, just for a, a bit on the side. You know, and uh, so the power of fancy uh, smashes hell out of the power of love, you know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> people will risk people <laughs> risk so much to uh, you know to have a sexual liaison. Yes. Wife, family, job, fortune, money, anything, you know, because there's some young girl or some young man that they uh, fancy. 
So oh. yeah, so there's a few things in there like that, a few life lessons, um, along with this story, which, which ends up with with a murder. You know, like they all do. <laughs> <laughs> so always judge a book by its cover. When you publish it, is this encourage you to write more novel? Yeah, it's. Uh, I say when, once I got into the string of it and I got above 17 pages um, and, I, and I read it myself and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than um, the books I've been reading on holiday. <laughs> and I thought, you know what? Um, you know, as I said, my second one, which went through Demons Are Forever, that was sort of based on my childhood and out clubbing and drinking and getting to a few scrapes and things like that, you know. And that was based on that we met someone that, that hurt another friend you know and but we didn't know because he got a nickname you know so it was like what he's he's him <laughs> yeah because no one no one knew it you know so so i wrote that one and, and like i said the my third one the his, history is a lie that's sort of that's been playing around in my mind you know for probably a decade you know and um yeah so yeah it got me it got me started and like i said i learned learned a lot um you know about the cover and getting followers on Twitter and the promotion of it and, you know, and all that sort of stuff. You know, I, I, I just thought you put a book out there and someone will just pick it up at random, won't they, with two quid? But that doesn't happen. Yes. So always judge a book by each Part of the book is a hard thing for you to write. Yeah, it was, it was like it was it was a shock that how few pages it was once I banged down the original story. <laughs> yeah. So then I had to um, sort of go right on a bit, and I, and, but I didn't want to fluff just fluff it out. You know, I like I like fast paced books with something happening in every chapter. You know, and um, yeah, and I think if it, someone read it and said like I couldn't believe how many jokes were in there. You know, <laughs> so I had to take the <laughs> jokes down a bit. Yes, definitely. So let's go to your uh, reader's review. The negative and positive review of Always Judge a Book by its cover. Of course, let's. And of course, we're going to start the negative review. According to Mr. Steve Strad, the book is very rough around the edges and repetitive. How do you comment on that? I don't know where it gets repetitive from, but um, I, I can admit it was rough around the edges. And Steve was someone I befriended on uh, Twitter uh, in the early days. And, um, you know, from him was um, his feedback as well. I went and rewrote a, a bit of it um, and took out, took out a few things and, and added a couple of extras. So, like I said, all feedback's good. And, you know, I mean, there's someone, you know, someone's giving it a wooden star, but hasn't told you why you know why it's a wooden star you know is, is there plot holes is there whatever so any, any feedback for anybody is good as long as, it's not, as long as it's constructive you know if someone just goes like i don't like you uh wooden star <laughs> you know that's <laughs> but, but any any feedback you know and um you know steve's feedback in particular did make me sort of rethink it and uh rewrite certain chapters a different way um because by the time I've got that feedback. I think I've re written another two, so I was getting more in my swing, you know. So, yeah, but it's, I don't know about repetitive. I don't, I don't agree with that. But, yeah, rough around the edges. I didn't have an editor. I think my um, girlfriend edited it at the time. And, um, you know, so, yeah. And a couple of people have brought it this week, actually, and I was, I've, I've even said to them, it is rough around the edges. You know, they've, they've brought it because they've enjoyed my others. But my style is sort of, or my skills has got a bit better, I, I guess. Yes. So do you think, do you think when Mr. Steve comment on that, uh, is that already revised or is that the old story? Uh, that was the original one. Okay. And then yeah. you revise it, right? I revised it, yeah. Okay. That'd be awesome. According to Miss uh, Nicola Lowe, great story and characters. So what are the characters of the story that you want to share to us? So like I said, you've got Keith. Um, he's a six foot four tree surgeon. Um, he's a bit of a boy. He likes to fight. He likes the ladies. He likes to drink. Um, and because of his fighting um, 
prowess and uh, getting into trouble. His dad finally has enough and kicks him out. Um, this is a few days after um, he's met Jenny, the, the woman that's inherited the house. And um, she lets him stay over and their relationship develops. Um, she's um, been brought up by a nan. Her mum abandoned her. Um, her mum called Sharon. And so she's sort of, she's just a nice girl, really. You know, she's got a job and things like that. Um, and <clears throat> he's, he's a bit of a user. You know, he's, his friends, the reason why he ends up at her house is because he's uh, annoyed all his his friends from school, you know, with his antics, always getting them in trouble. But her mother turns back upon the scene saying that the house should belong to her because, you know, she's the daughter. She's, you know, it was her mum that died. And uh, and he sort of helps, Keith helps uh, Jenny out, you know, by threatening her mum, <laughs> making it go away. <laughs> so yes. she feels a little, you know, that she's, you know, um, obliged to sort of let him stay. But then he abuses their relationship. As I said, he gets a little bit obsessed with, uh, once once they realise they can swap bodies, he gets a little bit obsessed with um, being her, you know, because he's used to being a six foot four bloke. Uh, and he quite enjoys being a, you know, five foot six woman, you know. <laughs> so um, he's got some issues. His mum, um, his mum wanted a girl when uh, when he was born and brought brought him up as a girl until he was seven, until his dad sort of had enough and kicked him kicked her out. Um, and he, and his dad then wanted him to be a man's man and sort of probably overdid it a bit, you know. Stick up for yourself. Don't take any rubbish. Hit him. Hit first, don't hit, you know, that sort of stuff. So he's a conflicted individual um, and he's selfish, you know. But, uh, and then there's Jenny, the, the person who's, who's nan died. And then there's her mum who thinks Jenny shouldn't have the house that she should. And so she's causing trouble behind the scenes. And that's, that's it, really. Three, three main characters, really. Yes. And according to Mr. White, a very Original debut. Yeah, I think, wow. you know, I mean, we've all seen films with the, the body swap. You know, you've got Big, I suppose, with Tom Hanks. You've got Freaky Friday. Freaky Friday is sort of referenced in it. Um, you know, so there, there is there is stories of, of people with body swapping, but they're normally sort of young adult comedies, aren't they? So this one's got a bit of a more uh, sinister twist to it, really, where adults and what would you actually do if you could swap bodies, you know? Um you know what, what? What would you do? So, yeah. So it, it is. Yeah, I, I like to think it's, it's quite original. You know, I, I haven't read anything else like it. That's for sure. Definitely. So, Mr. Morton, before we go on, I want to shout out to the people listening in Pakistan. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because I'm always on the top twelve Apple chart. So. In Punjab, thank you so much. I have 77% audience share. Islamabad, uh, 10% audience share. In Seed, I don't know if I pronounce correct, but thank you so much. Khyber Pakintua and Blockistan. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world like Mr. Martin Leder. That's right. Yeah, Plenty of books out there. Plenty of good books. Yes. I mean, Always judge a book by its cover. It's good for a series or a motion picture. Um. Yeah, I think you can make a movie out of it. I don't think there'll be a series in it. It's not, like I said, it's only 17 pages long. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, I think, I think it'll be a good good Sunday night crime drama to watch. You know, it's, it's, it's adult, you know, it's really adult themed. Um, you know, there's some nasty shenanigans going on in, in the background, you know. So, but um, yeah, 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 make, make a good, good Netflix show. So is this a, a is there a sequel or prequel of the book? There could there could well it could be both um, because like I said the the cult that uh, that possess the magic you know they they've been around for hundreds of years you know they peaked in the medieval times um, you know so you could easily do a, a prequel on it um, 
and you could do a sequel as well because I I did uh, I put a couple of things in there right at the end, um, you know. So you could, yeah, you could. There could be a sequel. Uh, I haven't planned one, but there could be. Ah, oh, sounds interesting. According to Miss Gary Barton, interesting twist. Yeah, it's you know I like I like my twists. I do pride myself on them. Um, looking back, this is probably one of my predictable twists I've, I've written, or I'm just getting a bit jaded in my old age. But yeah, it's um, like I said, they can they can you know body swap. There's a few twists in it really, but. Um, there's, yeah, they could body swap, so they end up swapping bodies, and then something happens. Um, well, a few things happen while they're in each other's bodies, you know. So, yeah, I can't say much more about giving the whole story away, really. Yeah. Spoiler alert, people. Spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, and according to Mr. Uh, Forder Grill, fast pace and entertaining. Oh, nice. I like that comment, mister. Give you five star. Yeah, like I said, I, I, all my books are fast paced. I mean, I don't think I've ever, ever had any feedback saying it, saying it dragged, you know, and um, I've had a couple of people read Siblings this week, got some great reviews on that, and they both, both, both of them read it in a day, you know, and so they're hooked from the first chapter. So, you know, I was watching um, all uh, The Last of Us, last night you know that on on hbo and it's it's so slow paced you know i know it's a game and when you're playing a game like tomb raider it's a lot more interesting trying to solve puzzles and watching someone else do it on the telly you know but um yeah yeah you gotta you gotta have a bit of pace to it i mean i think yeah yes people get bored when your story is so slow <laughs> <laughs> you can say come on give me the highlight Right, Mr. Martin, what is the best highlight? I always judge the book by each cover. Um, I think, um, I think there's a lot of humor in there, dark humor, obviously. And uh, as I said, there's um, you know, I quite like the way <laughs> she says, you know, he says he loves her, and she says, uh, Yeah, great, the power of love, you know, uh, Huey Lewis and the News, and Frankie goes to Hollywood and stick it up their bum, you know, the power of fancy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you fancy this, so you do it. So yeah, I think that that's quite quite amusing, really, and quite true. Definitely, yeah. the power of fancy. Yes, definitely. From the title itself, uh, always judge a book by its cover because people already incul inculcate to their mind, oh, don't judge a book by its cover, and then yeah. you replay it to always. It's like oh, something interesting to read, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, like, you know, you wouldn't pick up a, a manual for how to mend your car that got a unicorn on the front, would you? You want a picture of your car on a car car manual. <laughs> <laughs> so, you, you know, and if you want to read about, you know, World War, if you're reading about World War Two and the Holocaust and that, you know, that cover is going to reflect it. It's not going to be happy, smiling faces, is it? You know, so, um, yeah, people, you know, let's face it, we all judge books by the cover. Definitely. So before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the executive chef in one of the five-star hotel in downtown Toronto. So please do check Food 101. So Mr. Morton, who are your favorite authors? Who influenced you? I think, you know, I've, like I said before, I've had, I had such a gap um reading you know we're talking decades uh so when i was young i was reading yeah anything from jackie collins to uh, you know james herbert stephen king uh Kuntz and all that sort of stuff i mean just lately though i've been reading lots of indie indie people um kit harrison vicky ball um catherine morrison um, Carl Brothers, you know, just just anything, you know. I'm probably getting about at the moment. My job's quite um, non-demanding, uh, so I've actually read two books this week at work. Um, <laughs> you know, because, <laughs> don't tell anyone, but it's um, you know. So yeah, I'm just in the author all the way at the moment because they just, you know, they might might not be as polished, um, 
but they're, they're just so imaginative. You know, they're, they're, it's like there's a whole breed of indie authors who just got fed up of reading the same old stuff where, where celebrities get given book deals that don't even write themselves. And um, there's some really good stuff out there. So, yeah, I'm just reading in, indie people all the way. So you are supporting independent publishing? Yeah, independent writers, independent publishing, yeah. Self-publishers as well, yeah. So what do you think what the difference of indie authors and traditional authors? I think the indie authors are just a bit, sort of the, the shackles are released, you know. I don't think they're getting dragged down by some corporate person going, no, you can't do that, or you've got to put this in. You know, I think they just write what they want. And I think that's fresh and, you know, better. Where I think um, some of the traditional, you know, I brought I brought some books when I was away, you know, and I was just really disappointed in them. You know, like uh, Odd Thomas by Dean R. Koontz. And it's like, what am I reading here? You know, I just didn't get it. And um, so I think, yeah, you know, and then like I said, the, the celebrity circuit, you know, hey, you're on telly. Do you want to write a book? Yeah. I mean, like, what? Uh, there's a program on over here at the moment, like, called Between the Covers. And every week they have people on. Uh, and they go, and the host says, well, do you read a lot? And they go, no, not really. And you're like, why have you got people on who don't read reviewing books? You know, I mean, it's just, it's just, it's, I just don't get it, you know. And then they pick up some latest one by God knows who uh, and go through it, you know. But, yeah, I think the, the tradition, obviously there's some brilliant books out there and they're better than mine and, yeah, making much more money than mine and stuff like that, you know, and, each, and each to their own. But you know, I think I think the whole thing needs a good a good shake up, really. And I think they need people in some of these publishing houses to go out on a limb, and and they could probably pick them up dirt cheap as well, couldn't they? They wouldn't have to, you know, pay pay an independent author millions of pounds. They said they could probably buy buy up fifty grand. You know what I mean? They'd yes. probably rip their hand off. Yeah. I would. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so do you think because of indie authors or indie publishing, the world of writing become competitive? Yeah, I think, you know, it obviously opened the floodgates and just anybody can, you know, through Amazon, anybody can just write a book up and get it out there, can't they? So, so there is a, a huge amount. But having said that, you know, I've, I've only come across, I probably in the last three years, I probably read in... 40 books a year and the last, for the last three years probably a little bit less than that but at least I've read at least 100 books in the last three years and there's only been four or five I've just haven't finished you know for whatever reason there, you know so where I was buying books on holiday proper books and I was like this is rubbish you know getting eight nine pages in and giving up on it you know even though it was like you know Dean Arcoons or whatever <laughs> but you know, so yeah, yeah, it's a huge market. The floodgates have opened. You know, letting people like me in, things like that. <laughs> you know, yes. First book I wrote was seventeen pages, and um, you know, but but there is some really good stuff out there, and and, and really reasonably priced as well. You know, I see some prices of, you know, like established people on there. I mean, you're looking at like twelve quid. You know, and you can pick an India for like two quid on your Kindle. You know. Can't yes. Find a bargain. Yes. So, being an indie uh, author, what is your uh, advice for those aspiring writers to want to publish their book? I think you know you got to play the game. You've got to get on um, get on social media, and you've got to show that you're a team player. I think before you, you know, get involved, you can't. Yeah, you know, I see some people on there and go, "Hey, everybody, my debut novel's out." next week you know you can pre-order it you know like, who are you you know what you know is that it and and don't you know say like someone comes up with that and i think oh, i'll follow them and i get a dm message going hey thanks for the follow would you really want to read my book my book you know it's just like well calm down you know you're going to turn people off by by being in their face you've got to um you know you've got to support other people You've got to get a presence and you've got to sort of mix up your social media, not just my book, my book, my book. You know, you've got to interact and 
perhaps put some photos of your cat on now and again or, or a beach you've been to. Very well said, Mr. Martin. What is the quality of a good novel for you? I, I mean, I prefer to read like thrillers and, uh, and horror and things like that. But I've been, lately I've been reading a lot of uh, romance, you know, because just from the people I follow on Twitter and that. And uh, so it's just got to, well, I, personally, people, it's got to be realistic, you know, like no matter what the circumstances, you know, it's got to be realistic. Um, and people have got to react like how, how they would react if they come across a body, you know. Um, and also, you know, you've got to, you can't have, you can't have like five foot six women beating at bouncers. You know, it just, you just can't happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, you know, and, and yeah, women, women, there's so many brilliant women in history and that, and they just get overlooked, you know. I mean, I, I'd like to see, you know, some about French resistance, you know, some amazing women, some really brave women, you know, in, in Yugoslavia during the war and, and France and that. You know, you don't have to just, you know, go like, oh, we're going to take this story that was a bloke and make it a woman. You know, if you want, want there's plenty out there to, to take, you know. It's like with the, the James Bond. It's like, oh, should we make James Bond a black woman? Like, well, you know, a black woman spy would stand out a mile in uh, in Russia or China. I've been to Russia and China and, uh, you know, black people would stand out. So you wouldn't be a very good spy. I mean, I know obviously James Bond's a white man, but you think about Africa, it's massive. Uh, and there's no reason why we couldn't have a, a Nigerian or Ghanaian woman brought up in, you know, a British woman, go and be a spy over there because there's plenty going on where she could, you know, fit in. You know, so, you know, that, so a good, a good story to me has got to make sense. You know, and um, you know, and make you believe that it, that it's real, whether it's about zombies or not. You know, or aliens. It's still got to be. It's still got to be. It's got to seem real. You know, and people yes. act realistically. Yes, definitely. So, do you think in the future you can write a novel like that? Uh, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't start to write a story about a black woman because I'm not neither. You know what I mean? But I was just sort of using an example that. We could have spies. <laughs> you could yes. write a, you know, a, a, a James Bond story style with a with a, a black woman hero. You know what I mean? It, it, it would make sense. But don't just race swap or sex swap someone and stick them in nineteen fifties Russia because it ain't gonna work. You know. So, but yeah, no, I, you know, spot. I don't think I could write a spy novel because I've, I've got no experience of that world whatsoever. You know, most of my books are about people going out drinking and getting into trouble and trying to try to be attractive to the opposite sex, which is <laughs> which, which what, I, sort of, <laughs> what yes. I used to know about. I don't know about it anymore, but that's what I used to know. So that's what I write about. Yes, definitely. So for all your books that you wrote, what do you think that will become timeless? <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't think any of them really. But um, you never know. I'm getting a bit of traction at the moment, you know, and um, just want to break through with a few more sales and a few more reviews. And you never know, do you? So, like I said, the the two reviews I got this week, you know, we just it's just such a buzz, you know. It's just, you know, just really, really yeah. good. <laughs> yes. So, I wait. I woke up for a, a wee. Of, about two o'clock in the morning, and I reread the review before I went back to sleep. I don't know how <laughs> sad that is. But it, you know, it was good. And thank you, Player FM, for being number seven best book review podcast. Thank you so much for supporting this podcast. Always judge a book by its cover. Please invite our listeners to buy it. Okay, so if you fancy a uh, dark humor, dark story gender bending magic um, <laughs> story <laughs> it's just two pounds uh, it's quite original and unique and um, it's on kindle it's not on paperback it's just on kindle um give it a go you can read it in a day about an hour and a half probably read it and uh, hopefully you enjoy it so do you think in the future you will all your books will be on audio version audio yes 
Um, I don't know. I, I have to look at the costs and that. You know, I mean, it, it is a, this is just a hobby for me at the moment, really. Um, I have had people say you want you should get an audio one. I'd listen to it. it was in the car and all that sort of stuff. But you know, I'd have to look at the costs. Um, you have to get an actor to do it, don't you? And all that sort of stuff. And there's some really good ones out there. You know, as, um, the ones I have listened to are really good. But um, yeah, no, pro- probably not at this point, no. Definitely. Please, so let's support Mr. Martin later, because if you support them, they give their best. Okay, Mr. Martin, let's do the recap of all your books that we talk about. Number one, we talk about your favorite book, History is a Lie. And number two? Uh, Siblings, wasn't it? Siblings, Siblings is a family drama. Um, about an appearance on a quiz show where the main prize is five million pounds and it's all the uh, fallout afterwards of appearing on the show. Yes. And History is a Lie is all about uh, vampires, I, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For, for want of a better word, it's uh, History is a Lie or His Story is a Lie. So from ancient Persia to COVID. And uh, I actually posted a page um, of it um, on Twitter this week, where I've I've gone on about China and uh, Russia getting together and uh, out here <laughs> and causing trouble, and uh, it's quite reminiscent of what's going on at the moment. So I said, look, I wrote this two years ago. You know, find out what's really going on. Read my book. Yes, and of course, the liar debates and the warmonger. Yeah, that's my most popular book. Um, um, Review wise, 36, I think I got for that one. And that's uh, a murder mystery. Yes. Demons are forever. Another murder mystery. Um, sort of set in, set in my hometown, Northampton. A lot of, uh, lot of people I've met and, uh, and uh, worked with uh, sort of influenced, influenced that story, but that's another murder mystery. Yes. Snakes and ladders. Yeah, uh, we're going into horror with this one. This is a crime horror where um, some people rob the wrong people and end up in a spooky manor house in the Oxfordshire countryside. Yes, and more than you can chew. Uh, again, this one's based on true stories. Um, starts off with a dog attack, um, hence the title, and it just escalates from there where everybody in it, uh, you know, Buy yourself more than they can chew. Yes, people, let's support Mr. Morton later because uh, all the books is one of a kind and something to read. And thank you for your time, Mr. Morton, for, you know, talk about all your amazing books. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. And one more, people, we're going to talk about his coming book please tune in next week because this book is different from other uh, novels that you wrote uh this was a little murder mystery but yeah it's got a it, it's got a bit of romance in it which i didn't see coming but as i went along uh, that happened so yeah all good thank you Morning, people see you soon cheers bye-bye